Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Thursday, April 14th, 2022. And tonight I'll be sharing more true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find the podcast page with everything on it. Did that out of order? But anyway, uh, to find all episodes of the podcast along with links to social media, ways to donate, and other ways to contact me, you can visit the podcast page, which is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. And I'm um, always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions for shows, or if you have stories of experiences you'd like to share, whether they're your own or others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you on the show with me to tell those. Uh, stories and um, happy to uh, hear from you whenever and we will arrange something so um, and I believe that covers that I mentioned it in the discord earlier today but um, tomorrow night is going to be a special show just because I did not prepare a topic for a tomorrow night show um, so what's going to happen is I will talk about Basically, my views of the paranormal, and it'll also be a an ask me anything show uh, through the text text channel, the check uh, the chat, and um, also I'm going to uh, open up the option for one person to talk to me at a time um, through Discord. So. Um, Please join the server if you would like to talk to me about anything paranormal, and um, I'd happy be happy to hear from you whether you have uh, questions for me or about the paranormal. We can cover almost any topic you want to. We just like to keep it. I like to keep it a uh, mostly family friendly show, but um, I think it'll be a fun fun stream. And uh, so that's the plan for tomorrow night. And this kind of just developed uh, last night into today. So I think that covers that. Um, I believe with that, I can get on to the stories. So, here we go. This one says, about two months ago, I was driving home from my parents' house late at night on a, a route that connects New York State to Connecticut. My town in Connecticut directly borders the New York State. The town has some serious hills bordering on small mountains. At one point on this route, the trees thin out to the left, revealing a large hill or small mountain, which can be seen pretty clearly from different perspectives for about two minutes. As I was driving on this particular night, I noticed two large, slow blinking, slow moving rectangular lights low in the sky. I couldn't see any specific features of any craft surrounding these lights, so my perspective could be off but it seemed to me to be only about 20 meters higher than the top of the hill. I'm guessing the distance and or height by how fuzzy the edges of the lights seemed to me and by how large they appeared to be. In addition to the multiple perspectives provided by my consistent 40 miles per hour speed on the road. When I spotted it, it was nearly directly forward in my line of sight, off to the left just a little bit. In the two minutes that I watched it, it moved maybe half a mile further to my left. For reference, the top of the hill I mentioned, I think, is about one mile from that road in that same direction to the left. That would mean a speed of about 15 miles per hour. 
The lights were blinking too slowly to be standard aircraft strobes. On for about two seconds. Off for about another two seconds. In a regular rhythm. They are moving and blinking in unison, which implies they were both part of one larger thing. They seem to be set about 30 or 40 yards apart from one another. There was no noticeable sound and no witnesses aside from myself. I had always thought that if I saw a UFO, I'd love to follow it, but I was too freaked out. I didn't do that this time. It felt like an extinct, instinctive horror. I couldn't bring myself to deliberately, deliberately get closer. Next time though, if there is a next time, I will try harder to overcome that. And so that's where that story ends. Uh, interesting story there, interesting sighting. Um, pretty amazing that uh, uh, sighting, it was two, two lights but if they were if they were two lights on the same craft and it was moving away from the the driver the writer of the story and it was the lights were 30 to 40 yards apart from each other i'm definitely no expert in distances but that seems like a good size whatever that was um and also i i um the rectangular light aspect was interesting to me I keep saying that word um, because of a sighting that I, my dad and stepmom had and while I was in the vehicle with them one night, uh, where they saw, they only saw one light though, but it was up in the clouds, but it was rectangular from what they were saying. <clears throat> so, but this, in this case, it's two lights and yes, I, I see, uh, mountains. Yes. Uh, Apoc mentioned that, yeah. It does seem like mountains do come up fairly often on this show. Even when we're not doing episodes about mountains, they just, they're, they're, things happen around there. So, um, yeah. Like I said, the 30 to 40 yards apart. If that was one vehicle, that seems like a good sized vehicle. Um, at least to me anyway, but, uh, and it seems like they were seen for a little while there. So good, uh, good. I think that's a, that's a good, um, I, I like that sighting. That's not just a, possibly a star or a satellite in the sky as far as the way it seems anyway, uh, to me. So. But uh, I'll get on with this next story here. Um, okay. It says, this happened about a month ago. I'm pretty close to my uh, boyfriend's family. And they needed someone to watch the house while they took a trip away out of town. Keep in mind, I lived... Uh, uh, it mentions, well, I guess you can say, in, in Ohio. So the town where they were going was a good four hour, four plus hour drive away. They didn't request much. They just needed someone to watch their animals, two dogs and three cats, for the night and keep them fed. Naturally, I agreed. I'm pretty familiar with the, their property. And didn't mind doing it for no pay. Things went pretty well at first. I made a point of closing the door to every room I wasn't actively using. Including my boyfriend's bedroom, his little brother's bedroom, the master bedroom, and both restrooms. Making half of the house very empty and quiet. At about 9.30 or 9.45 p.m. I was going about my business, making myself some mac and cheese, when I heard what sounded like voices 
coming from my boyfriend's bedroom. Keep in mind, I was the only one in the house, and every animal was within my line of sight, with both, both dogs' ears per, uh, perking up when the voices started. So I decided to take a look. As I approached the closed door, the voices got quieter and quieter, eventually stopping once I was outside the door. Opening the door and turning on the light, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. My boyfriend's TV was off, as well as his game console and his tablet. Everything was just as he left it. So I just shut the lights off and closed the door, with no further incident that night. I'm a pretty big skeptic when it comes to paranormal things, like ghosts. But I'm all out of ideas. For what it could have been. I'd love to hear other people's input on it, or if anyone has had any encounters like this themselves. So, um, that's, uh, voices like that, I'm just wondering now what they were saying, what they, what they sounded like, if they sound like anyone the writer knew. Um, they didn't say that, so maybe not. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, amazing how either the timing was just right so that they faded away, or they sensed this writer approaching the door to that room and went away. Now, I'm just wondering here, I'm guessing they didn't say there was a door leading out of the room besides the one leading into the room. So, I don't think it was a regular person or people hiding in that room. It doesn't say that there's any kind of sounds other than just talking. Now, talking to me, that's a, that could be a number of different things. That could be um, somehow residual that could be some kind of a, a time anomaly where there's just no, there's no visual, but there's people maybe from a different time that somehow, for whatever reason, their voices carried over into the time of, that, of the story that happened for the writer. Um, I think there's a lot of different reasons, different things that could be. So... I don't know what to make of that, really. Doesn't sound like... They don't say there was other activity in the house. So... Um, at least there's that. Um... Excuse me, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. But at least it was just a small... Basically a small thing, one-time thing, that happened. So, I'm going to get some water real quick here, and then I'll get on to the next story. Alright. So, this next one says... Uh, it says, I've always been adventurous, especially in middle and high school. One day, when I was riding my bike home from middle school, I rode down a dead-end street that ended at some woods. I walked into the woods following a deer path, which led me to a very large farm field. In the middle of the field, which was about six football fields large, there was an ancient tree next to an old silo that must have been built during the early 19th century or late 18th century. I walked to the tree and explored the patch of uh, 
grass in the middle of the field. There was a rusty car from the 1930s, other rusty old things, very old shoes, and the ancient silo with only half of it remaining, with some rubble nearby. After I discovered this place, I go there many times after school to get some peace and quiet away from civilization. On one of these days, something paranormal happened that I'll never forget. I was walking around the silo when all of a sudden I was surrounded by what sounded like a room full of people at a party. It was like being at a large par party, large party, surrounded by people talking all at once, but not being able to distinguish any particular words. I snapped a few pictures with my uh, 2003 flip phone during this time. The voices slowly dissipated into silence. Later, when I got home, and looked at the pictures. I showed them to my mom and my step uh, stepdad, who put the pictures on his computer. There were many orbs of many different colors surrounding the silo. I snuck back to the silo many times after that, but nothing paranormal ever happened again. Years later, and after my mom's divorce with my stepdad. We still can't find those pictures, which were stored in his computer, and I must have thrown out my old flip phone. But I'll never forget hearing the waltz at the old silo. So, um, seems like voices and orbs, again with the voices, is coming out of nowhere in the middle of the day. This is outside basically part of a silo is there but it's not complete um and then when the writer took pictures of the area they caught orbs i don't know how i've never really i don't think i've heard that many stories of orbs in the middle of the day like that out in when there's sunlight at least not directly um but if it was just the the orbs on, on the the phone camera um i i don't know it might be a little bit easier for some people to write it off but with the sounds at the same time that makes me wonder if there was something more to the orbs if it was part of the whole experience uh just because they were happening at the same time, it sounds like. Now here's an idea. I wonder if orbs can somehow generate sounds in some cases. I don't know how, but I would. This is something that'd be impossible to know. But I, if they were all around this person. These orbs were all around this person. At the same time, they were hearing sounds. What does that? What does that mean? Or how does that work? Or does it work like that? Or were they somehow um, sending energy that she was picking up? I don't know. It's just those two things combined at the same time it makes me wonder about that now. Uh, and that's something I hadn't thought of when I first uh, found the story earlier today. But um, that may be something I have to look into here soon. Maybe not tonight. I've got plans for tonight. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's something to look into. I think. Actually, they have. There have been sounds. Um, going back to that orb episode that um did research for for trouble minds radio one of the articles i believe that uh apoc sent or maybe one of those one of the videos talked about orbs 
there being orbs seen in space and at the same time these softer, these low sounds being picked up at the same time. So, of course, that's out in space. But uh, I thought that that seemed familiar from somewhere. I just can't remember where for a minute there. So, maybe there is something to that. Well, that's uh, that's something definitely to, to research, I think, further down the line. But, um, so I guess I should go on to the next story instead of sitting here trying to process everything right now. And, and uh, just muttering to myself here. So, um, let's see here. Get to the next story. All right. This one says... I was at my aunt's house in 2003 and decided to spend the night and hang out with my cousins and aunt and uncle. Or aunt, I'm sorry, it doesn't really say uncle. My aunt lived in a house built uh, about the 1930s. <laughs> That's kind of the story in this story, both. mentioned to there. The day was normal. Watching movies, talking nonsense, all of that teenage stuff you do when life feels carefree. Fast forward to night and everyone goes off to bed. I was just going to lay on the couch that night and was still up watching TV and texting my girlfriend. The couch I was sitting on was centered in the living room so you could walk around it the living room itself was quiet or quite large they say quiet but they mean quite large with a high ceiling and chandelier in the middle i remember my girlfriend saying she was going to uh going to bed so i started playing games on my phone uh Oh, she was going to brush her teeth before going to bed. So I started playing games on my phone while waiting for her to text me back. In that time, I dozed off, but woke up what seemed like minutes later, still holding my phone in front of me. The TV was still on, but I could see a faint reflection in the screen of my phone of an older woman standing behind me. I instantly turned to look, but there was nothing there. I felt uneasy and ended up going to my cousin's room and making up some excuse about feeling sick and basically crashing on their floor. I woke up the following morning and thought I must have been overtired and letting my imagination get the better of me. I was still lying in my makeshift bed while everyone else was still asleep. I needed to use the bathroom, so I got up and walked out of the room. And in the corner of my eye, I saw someone sitting in the armchair in the living room. I, I immediately turned to look, and this time I saw this lady sitting there in the armchair, staring blankly ahead not noticing me looking. I remember her clear as day, older, 85 to 90 years old, with short white hair and a cream colored dressing gown with slippers and the most expressionless stare into nothing. I went, to my, I went straight to my cousin and woke her up. She was irritated and told me to stop playing games with her, but when I went to look again, the lady was gone. About an hour or so passed, and I heard my aunt wake up making coffee. I went and told her what I saw. She, she said she had seen her too. My cousins had not, though, but the fact that my aunt and I had seen her creeped them out. Now this is the part that gets really weird. Fast forward about five years. My aunt had moved out and was living elsewhere. 
and that house became a distant memory. I was visiting my dad's place on the weekend, and we were talking about paranormal things. And I mentioned my step I mentioned to my stepmother about the lady I saw. Her eyes widened immediately. She said it sounds very familiar to what she had witnessed or experienced in the house she had lived in growing up. I mentioned the suburb and she said the street. It was the same house. My stepmother, her older brother, and her mother all described what I saw. It was insane. The creepy thing is, my aunt is my mother's sister and doesn't know my stepmother at all. I drove down that street recently, but the house has been knocked down. I wonder what happened to that lady, who she was, and what she was after. She didn't seem evil. My aunt even said she could feel someone brushing her gently while she slept in the house. Maybe she was just lonely. And that's where that story ends. Uh, multiple sightings from multiple people who didn't even know each other when they had the sightings over, it seems like, several years. Confirming it later. That, to me, that was an amazing story. That's almost even more amazing in a way than the one about multiple sightings of basically the original owner of my grandparents' house because this was two families that at the time of their sightings, they were completely separate. They didn't know each other. Uh, it almost seems too too good to be true in a way, except depending on the size of this area that they're talking about, I don't know. I hate to just write it off. Um, so, and if it was two different time periods, then then two families could have owned it, and then there could have been a family in between. Or they could have sold it to one another and not even known, because they weren't connected yet. Um, so, I was really surprised when I found that story. Um, so, I had to share that. But, um, so I'll go on here. I have a couple more stories. And then we'll be done. This one says, basically the town my grandma works for bought this old farmhouse that was built in the 1850s. It was an amazing house, but kind of creepy. So basically, she took me over to visit it and look around. It was neat, but strange. When I walked in, I closed the door behind me, and I made sure it clicked. At first, I was in awe by this neat old house. But then I noticed something. Some bottles on the fireplace. I walked over to them and read them. They were worn, but there were things like sage and other stuff. Kind of weird, I thought. Later on, upstairs, my grandma was showing me a room, but suddenly we heard whispering behind us. We both looked at each other, a little creeped out, but we moved on. But when we went downstairs, we noticed a draft. I noted this immediately. As soon as I went down and rounded a corner, downstairs and rounded a corner, uh, the door was wide open. I was shocked. Immediately my instincts kicked in, <laughs> and I went back into the living room, and I said, if there is a presence in this place, please make yourself known. At first, it was silence. Then upstairs, a door creaked. 
my grandma and I said heck with this and got out of there. Later, after viewing the images, I guess they said they took the camera pictures? I didn't see that part. I noticed something. There was a face in the window. The upstairs one, where we heard the door creak. Then my grandma told me about a spirit who lived there, who I believe died there in 1937. But she wasn't evil. She was a calm spirit. In 1976, she was caught posing in a couple's wedding photo taken on the stairs. Really amazing. And I'd love to visit the house again and maybe make some sort of communication or conversation with the spirit. She seemed like a nice but curious spirit. Didn't try to hurt us or anything. She was just wondering what we were doing there, I guess. Needless to say, a creepy but exciting experience. So, that person, the writer, was did something I normally would not do, or recommend doing, um, in a way. But that's just me. I don't ever try to communicate directly or ask for more signs or anything like that. I feel like that can be asking for more activity than maybe you would want. Um, I think that they were lucky in a way that it was, again, like they said, it was not a, not a malevolent spirit or being, whoever it was. Um, so it worked out okay. Sounds like it was an amazing experience. Um, and then getting that picture and then apparently it wasn't the first time this figure was caught in a picture before, uh, from before, so... Seems like an active location. Um, it's one of those places I wouldn't mind visiting. I just wouldn't go quite as far as the writer did. Um, at least not on my own. I'd, I'd have to be with a, a team of inv investigators that kind of does that and, and does so respectfully and has procedures for kind of making sure that Everything is safe and nothing or no one travels with anyone after the after the night is over. So but um neat story there for sure. So uh I have one more story here. And uh then that'll be it. And this one says this story takes place in twenty fourteen. Not positive on the month. Both myself and the person I was with have tried to look up information regarding what we had seen, but nothing quite lines up exactly. I lived in a rural area in northern South Carolina at the time, but worked in southern North Carolina. That can be, that's confusing. Um... Again, I'm not good with geography, so maybe it's not so confusing. Anyway, uh, it says, I lived with my boss at the time, and I would drive us back to the house every night. We had a tattoo shop, so some nights we didn't head home until it was pretty late. The route we took was basically completely secluded country roads. Most late nights, we wouldn't pass more than five cars on the entire ride. On one night in particular, as we were coming through a part of the, the route I only know as... Uh, okay, I won't say the name. Um, a part of the route due to the name of a church and a street in the area, I noticed an animal in my peripheral vision. Being in rural areas, it wasn't uncommon to see deer, dogs, even sometimes hogs by the road or in the woods. This animal seemed to be running alongside the car, however, which was rather concerning when it didn't immediately fall behind, but seemed to keep up. 
I realized how odd this was considering I was probably going at least 65 miles per hour. I started to turn and look to see if, if maybe I was just seeing a shadow. At this point, whatever it was seemed to run ahead of the car and run across the street into the woods on the opposite side. It was then I noticed as my headlights hit the creature, instead of illuminating it, it seemed as though it absorbed the light. It appeared to be roughly the size and general shape of a wolf, but the form wasn't exactly visible. There was no reflection from light hitting any part of this creature that I could see, not even where its eyes should have been. As it disappeared, I was extremely startled and turned to ask my friend, what was that? He asked what I'd seen, and I told him. He told me to tell his wife exactly what I'd said when we got home, and I did. Her eyes widened, and her mouth dropped, and that's when my friend told me he'd seen the same thing as me that night, and he'd seen it once before, but with someone who did not admit seeing it then. <clears throat> Anyway, does anyone have a clue what this was? I've tried to find it, but the closest is the black dog legend. But what we saw did not have red eyes and seemed to be a void. Um, now, not all figures necessarily are going to have red eyes. So that's not necessarily as big of a deal uh, in a way. But maybe Dogman, yeah. Uh, Apoch says Dogman. Um, I don't know. That's multiple sightings in the same area. Um, information that way. At least uh, that was all that happened. At least they weren't walking anywhere. That could have been even more frightening, I'd imagine. Uh, 65 miles per hour. That's pretty fast for anything to be going. Um, when it's just running. So, at least it seems like that to me. Uh, but, um, I thought it was pretty neat that, uh, I found these stories I found tonight, or today. The first one was a UFO, and then it went to kind of the usual ghost or haunting stories. And then at the very end, the last story I found was a cryptid sighting. So, um... It's kind of, uh, as I said, to laugh at that. But, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, maybe Dogman, maybe, I don't know. Some kind of large dog-like thing. Dog, I don't know. Um, really neat sighting, though, there. It's definitely, I would not want to walk around that area at night. Um, I don't care if I'm with someone or not. So, but, uh... That's going to do it for today. Uh, again, tomorrow night is going to be a Ask Me Anything slash call in show slash my views on the paranormal. And um, so I hope everyone can make it. That's going to be in my Discord server. And you can find a link to that in the podcast page. Again, that's Salcedo Paranormal at podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O Paranormal dot podbean dot com uh join the discord server and then you can listen in and then what we'll do is um in the the appropriate uh text channel you'll just let me know that you want to talk and uh i will let you uh give you the signal to unmute and then we can uh we can talk for a bit and we'll see what happens um the good thing is i have no other plans tomorrow night so we can go as long as as you all want it to go. So. But um, thank you all for being here and listening. As always. Whether you are here for the live streams. Or for the. Um, you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds. I uh, always appreciate all of your support. And um, I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow night. On the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.